Yesterday, we began looking at the influence that Christian people should be having on others. And we talked about different stages of life that Christians can find themselves in and the way that we can have an impact upon others regardless of the age that we are currently at. We talked about the influence of younger people. We looked at the example of Timothy and Titus and how Paul encouraged them to be an example of the believers to show thyself a pattern of good works. And certainly these two young men lived up to what Paul encouraged them to do. And so even as a young Christian, we have the ability to exert a powerful impact upon others. We then talked about the influence of older people. And as we age, sometimes people tend to have the desire to slow down and let someone else take over and do what they've been doing. And many times when that happens, they let their influence uh, decline. They are not as involved as they should be in the lives of others. And what happens is many times these older Christians fail to be the godly influence that they really should be. And so regardless of what age that we are, we can be a good influence. Now today we're going to look at a couple of other aspects of influence. First, we're going to talk about the influence of evil people. Paul addresses those who are evil in his letters to Timothy and Titus. He reminds them that just as godly people can be significant influences, individuals who serve Satan can be evil influences. Now, may God help us to see what they did and learn from their misdeeds. Paul wrote to Timothy saying, But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, and their word will eat as doth a canker of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some, 2 Timothy 2, verses 16 through 18. These men's evil examples cause the faith of some to be completely overthrown. And indeed, a bad influence can be devastating spiritually. Titus was told that some would deceive people and plunder entire houses. Now, the plunder was not physical. Instead, through false teachings, these people would turn from the truth, Titus 1, verses 10 through 14. Now, can we see how destructive a bad example can be? Evil actions hurt more than just the guilty party. And just as a godly influence benefits many, so too can an evil influence destroy many. So let us determine that our examples will be good and not evil. But then let's consider the importance of godly influences. In the final verses of Titus chapter 2, we see why God wants people to be good examples. Christ, he died and showed us how to live, 1 Peter 2 verses 21 through 22. And we need to be good examples to lead others to Christ. Jesus taught that people will glorify God when they see us being salt and light, Matthew 5, verses 13 through 16. But do we appreciate what the Lord has said? What kind of impression are we leaving on people? Do you think that you have nothing good to offer others around you? Well, if that's the case, you're wrong. Even by trying not to be an influence, you will find that you are an example. But the kind of example that you're being is that of laziness and complacency. And we don't want to be that kind of example. But you see, you can be a good example. And you can live the kind of life that needs to be seen, that needs to be followed. And you can be able to make the claim that people can look to you as an example, look to you as an influence, just as Paul said in Philippians uh, 4 and verse 9. So the question I want to leave you with today is this. Are you doing your part to be a good example? Are you doing your part to live a godly life before those that you come into contact with? Friends, we want to thank you for joining us for our program today. Please give serious thought to these things and have a blessed day.